Hey everybody, it's Pete Renzulli. Welcome to Stock Trading Pro. Today's episode is going to be epic. We're going to walk through a coaching call from last night. We're going to talk about how I find the best stocks to buy now. And a lot of it is pretty simple, but it really comes down to preparation. And you're actually going to see some of the stock market preparation that we do and some of the questions that we highlighted on yesterday's coaching call. I'm about to show you a very long Google document that has all of this outline plus something I normally don't do. I'm actually going to give you uh, the entire list of stocks that I plan to discuss in today's trading game plan meeting. In case you don't know, I actually do two hours worth of research for our Discord community every single night, and I give it to them in three different formats. And I'm going to show you that today. Uh, I'm also going to show you the stocks that I plan to trade today, uh, stocks that are actually in my game plan for today, literally. Uh, part of it is trading the news, part of it is trading order flow, part of it is reading the tape. But I think the most important part of that uh, is understanding the profit potential on each trade and how much attention that it should have. And just as important is how much buying power you should allocate to those ideas. One of the things we're going to talk about today is what does the perfect trade look like? And what do you do if you're looking at an idea that is not the perfect trade? I, I went crazy last night on one of our coaching sessions, our new boot camp coaching session, uh, where somebody had mentioned that they were scaling out of every single trade that they took in increments of three. And I almost jumped out of my chair saying, why? <laughs> why are you doing that? There's no reason to do that. Not every trade is the same. And that little distinction of understanding how to stack which trades are awesome uh, versus which stocks are, ah, they're okay, you can put them on, but maybe not the greatest idea in the world and you might trade those for cash flow. So I'm going to give you a really big behind the scenes sneak peek today. We're going to go into the research document. We're going to go into uh, the exact ideas that I'm looking at today. So this is a real big sneak peek today. The entire document that I'm about to show you, and I don't normally do this, it's just that Yesterday was such an amazing, amazing day for our community. Uh, I want to share some of the ideas because I want to get you excited about stocks. I want to get you excited about what's possible if you're prepared. Now, the big thing that we talk about all the time, and it's something that I, I kind of really drill home every single morning, especially in our game plan meeting in the morning, which is every morning at 830, is when you know what you're looking for, you're no longer lost. A lot of people like the market's overwhelming. There's so much to look at in the stock market. That only happens when you're trying to look at everything. When you understand what matters and how that translates into winning stock picks, you learn to let everything else go. I'm, I'm, I'm just super pumped about this today. Uh, stick around. Be back in just one second. Okay, so we're really going to get into it right now. I just want to make sure I say hello to everybody. Uh, John Bates, just thank God it's Friday. Thank God, pal. <laughs> Kim, good morning. Kim is one of our our, uh, our calendar trade experts at this point and asking some good questions on that as well. Uh, so I just want to hop over. I just want to show you briefly uh, the document that we are about to go over. So we're actually going to cover all of this today. We're going to talk about last night's coaching session. I'll make this a little bit bigger. Uh, and I want to dive a little bit deeper into that. Uh, I'm going to give you a link for this video. It's a pretty awesome video. Uh, you can see where the questions came from. This is actually an end of year coaching session. And then we're going to break it down a little bit deeper into the uh, stock picks. Then we're also going to break it down into the research. One of the ways that we do the research, we're going to break down a game plan. And then we're also going to break down even some more deeper research. So I want to get this across to you very, very clearly. I am super excited about this uh, YouTube video today because this is what it takes. And I kind of went hard. We have, you know, Last night we have our boot, uh, boot camp coaching sessions, which are every Thursday night at 4.30. Um, I don't hold back. If somebody is making excuses, I go right at them because I care very deeply about your success. If you invested your time and your money to be on those calls, you want me to help you. You actually want me to give you suggestions of how to get from, you know, struggling Stan to making money, Matt. You know, that's really what we want to get to. So I am really excited about this. Now, the entire document that I'm about to share with you, I am going to post inside of our Facebook group. The Facebook group is free. There's no charge or anything like that. All you need to do is be in the Facebook group. If you're not already in the Facebook group, there's a link in the description below uh, to just make sure that you get in there, request access, and the entire document that we're about to 
uh, show you right now is going to be in there for you to make a copy of and download. And actually, I'm going to show you how to do that um, right now. Let me actually pull this over. Um, and let me actually remove that for a second. Uh, so when you get into this document, what I want you to do is you're going to go over here to file and you're going to go to make a copy. That's how you're going to take it and make a copy of this um, for yourself. OK, so just out of curiosity, if you could all type into the chat right now or even in the comments, if you happen to be watching this replay a little bit later, how do you know that you have one of your best trades sitting in front of you? What type of process do you use? And write out as much detail as possible. Are you using moving averages? Are you using candlesticks? Are you using stochastics, MACD? I'd like to challenge everybody right now. Make this a conversation. This is kind of the stuff that we do all the time on the coaching sessions. Write that out. I'm going to review those as we're going along, see if there's anything exciting that uh, maybe we could tweak, maybe something somebody doesn't know. But I want to get into the coaching session questions first because that's really the big part of it. Before we do that, though, I want to talk about some of the best ideas that I'm looking for today. And I want to show you something easily one of the biggest trades that we made yesterday. And I'm actually going to make sure that I prove it to you that we called it out yesterday. I know John Bates and a few other people in our community uh, were actually on this um, yesterday. Um, so one of the bigger trades that we had yesterday, and it was Boeing, just to give everybody an idea of Boeing. Now think about this, the context of the market going into yesterday was the market got hammered, FOMC announcement raised by three quarters of a basis points again, everything closed on the low, big volume to the end of the day. But I called out an idea in a stock as a buying opportunity yesterday for one simple reason. And again, these there's so many different reasons. I'm going to go over one of them in the coaching session. It had relative strength to the market. And I want to first show you the call and I want to show you the setup. And I'm going to show you a very quick way of doing something simple. There's so many different ways that we stack the order flow, but this is by far one of the simplest things. Now, we get a lot of people coming into our community saying, I don't have a lot of time. How do I do this? First of all, you don't have time is BS. If you have money in the market, you better have the time because you hired yourself as a money manager. What qualifications do you have? If you hired somebody and says, hey, you know, uh, let's let's look at Dean. If, some, if Dean hired somebody to manage money and the person's like, ah, I don't have time to do it. I'll just do it in my spare time if I can find the time. Dean would fire that person in a heartbeat. <laughs> so if you have money in the market and you're looking to put that money to work and you expect it to grow, you need to find a little bit of time. So first I want to talk about, I want to show you the idea that we discussed yesterday just to really kind of bring this home. So this is our Discord community. You can see everything that we have in here. We have stocks, options, day trading, swing trading, Forex alerts, options channel. Like we have all that kind of stuff. But I just want to draw your attention over here to Boeing and a 151 entry. And this was yesterday morning at 1030 in the morning. I don't know if you could actually see that. Maybe you got to zoom that in a little bit, but it was 1030 in the morning. So now I'm going to walk you over here. And obviously there's um, certain types of software that everybody uses. Depends on, you know, completely depends on uh, how much money you want to spend and that kind of thing. But I want to drift on over to here. If you remember what the market did just two days ago, and you can see it's actually up this morning. That's going to be another topic of conversation today here where the market got absolutely demolished and probably a little bit better to see over here and closed on the lows. Yesterday, based on doing the order flow stacking research, which usually takes me a little bit of time, you know, usually around 90 minutes to two hours. And again, I'm doing that so you don't have to really. I'm giving you all of this research every single night. I'm going to show you a sample of that in a second. So you come into yesterday and you're making a game plan and you're like, what is the most likely outcome for the stock market after the FOMC? And we did get that lower move to the downside. But then you have to step up a little bit and you have to say to yourself, but what if that doesn't happen? What if we get a big move to the downside and the market finds bids and stops going down? Even if that does not mean we have a massive rally, which stocks should have buying pressure if the market stops going down? So in other words, if this happens, then I plan to do this. If the market goes down, which is the bigger list of stocks that I should be looking at as short sales. If the market opens lower but stops going down and the market internals validates that we've stopped going down, which stock should I be prepared with in case that happens? So again, 
not complicated. What is that? Two sentences? If the market goes down and follows through, what do I plan to do? If the market goes down and does not go down, what do I plan to do? So in other words, I want to be prepared before I need to make that decision. Now, if we go back over to that document, you can see that was actually part of the questions, right? Over here, don't react, plan. It removes the emotion. Raise your hand if you trade with too much emotion when you're in the markets. So all we did is we built out that scenario of understanding what happens if the market does X, Y, and Z, and how do we plan to trade it? So we actually found the pocket of opportunity in some of the large cap stocks and Boeing happened to have a green day. Let's actually go over here on the day that the market got walloped. So if you go over here and this was the day when the Fed made the announcement, stocks look like this, but Boeing did this. So when you take that into consideration, you immediately step up in your chair and like, whoa, <laughs> Boeing's doing something that the market did not do. Maybe that should have my attention because they did what we call held the bid. They held the bid, which means instead of it going down, not only did they hold it above, but it closed positive and traded into what is known as a giant bullish engulfing candlestick. So now we're starting to put the pieces together. Again, both sides of the trade. If the market goes down, what do we plan to do? Removing all the emotions. If the market goes down and stops and actually kind of starts to go up, then what do we plan to do? So if we take a look at Boeing again, and, and again, I want to shoot a hole and I don't have the time. Look, you can have money or you can have excuses. You can't have both. They, they don't mix. You can't find them in the same book. It doesn't work that way. A little bit of extra time, all of a sudden you start to see a little bit of results. You're, you're losing less money. You're making a little money. And all of a sudden you find more time to, for success because you're seeing results. All right. So just based on that one type of scan, which was noticing which stocks had relative strength when the market was very weak. So if we do that from yesterday, that meant Boeing was in our list of stocks to buy if the market stopped going down, which is exactly what happened in the market yesterday. We didn't exactly rally in the market yesterday, but if we take a deeper look, we stopped going down. And here's the first hour of the day. We had a big push down and then we went sideways. We did not get this. We got that. So at that point, now we have to say to ourselves, what's going on in the market? So we're looking for the best stocks to buy. We're looking for winning stocks. We already prepared just using simple relative strength. And there's two different ways to do that. And you actually want to stack this a little bit more. Keep typing into the comments exactly how you look at the market. I actually, I'm going to go back through these and I'm going to answer them all because it's kind of fun to look at. Um, so anyway, so does everybody understand that? Type yes if you understand that. All we're doing right now is saying what's likely to happen. And then we map out two scenarios. And if you really want to bring this home in a big way, you probably want to take a screenshot of this is we have our member Jan here and you can see how detailed Jan's game plan is. We actually teach you how to run through this type of game plan where you're looking at the market, you're looking at the stocks, you're building an argument, you're scripting the trade, you're talking about position size, you're talking about what happens if it opens below, what happens if it opens above. That's the kind of game planning that once the market opens, there's absolutely no emotion anymore. Jan and all the people that are trained in our community know exactly what they plan to do before the market open. Raise your hand if when you trade, your heart goes up and down every single time your stock goes up and down. That just means that you're trading emotionally instead of running a business. When you're running a business, you're like, okay, I have capital. How do I put that capital to work? If you invest in stocks, you know that one of the top things that you should be looking for is return on invested capital. That's what you are looking to do with your trading account. You have invested capital and your job is to just build arguments. We call them arguments based on stacking the order flow, reading the tape, looking for the optimal entry. And then you do this. And this is a really important part of last night's coaching session, which is here. So we're going to actually do a little bit more of a deep dive into this, which is here. If you know perfect, then anything else is different risk. So I want to break this down now. If you understand what the best perfect trades looks like, and everybody's posting these in here. Uh, T. Brown, thank you for posting that in there. Uh, use the 20 and I use hourly and weekly for the swing trade. So that's very important. He knows that he's swing trading. So that's going to be very big on the objectives, uh, what we're looking for. 
Uh, let's see, Kim talking about order flow 10, uh, 2050 and reading the tape. All right. So here's the thing that I want to talk about. And I actually want to go a little bit further down to yesterday's coaching session because I, I, I got to be honest, I literally jumped out of my seat uh, and it was here. Somebody in the coaching session last night was talking about and, and almost being proud of, first of all, what they were talking about in the trade was they're eking out some profits. They're not making that much money. They're making a little, losing a little, and can't figure out why, but they have this big, long, detailed strategy of everything they're doing. And then the very last part of, here's how I get out of every trade. I get out of a third, and then I get out of a third, and then I get out of a third. And I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> you can't do that. It's simply that person doesn't know this. And I can't stress this enough. And I'm going to bring this back up on the screen right here. If you know perfect, then anything else is different risk. Okay. And now we're going to bring it down here. Stop scaling out of every trade. Some are meant to hold longer. So if you know what perfect looks like and you have a perfect trade, how in the world can you say, regardless of how perfect that trade is, I'm going to keep scaling out? It is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. There's no other way to put this. It's just absolutely ridiculous. And I actually want to bring this lesson up on the screen because I actually saw this on uh, YouTube last night. Uh, excuse me. I'm sorry, not YouTube on, um, on Twitter. So I just want to zoom this in a little bit and basically right here. Okay. Really important to have a margin of safety on every trade in terms of uh, your expected result. Right. But here's the thing. Bad trading gets masked when overall you're doing well. That is a monster part of understanding trading. You think you know everything, but you throw in all these little garbage trades and they get hidden because you're not making the kind of money that you really want, right? So when you bring this down and you start to really get to the meat and potatoes of what it takes to succeed, you need to lower the size on average trades tremendously, which means you have to recognize average trades in the first place, but then you also need to understand that when you have your best ideas, you need to make more on your best ideas. I can't stress this enough. I, I literally was like I'm doing right now, jumping out of the out of and, and screaming last night. Every trade is not the same. You have a responsibility, and that's why I asked everybody what your trading strategy was. You have a responsibility to yourself, to your trading account, to your family, to your sanity to recognize when something is a fantastic idea and you owe it to yourself to make more. So when we're looking at that idea in Boeing, and again, I showed you the idea in Boeing. It was in the game plan. Now, this is the entire point that I want to talk about. Now, I'm going to show you very quickly how to do it after we get to the Boeing idea. So we talked about Boeing. We mapped that trade out yesterday. It was a part of our game plan. It was a relative strength play with the market. We actually just showed you what the trade was. We called out a buy stop in Boeing at 151, which is essentially right over here. Now, it was in the game plan prior to the market opening. When the market opened, we called it. Now, what's kind of fun is if you notice, we actually called it out prior to it getting up there. So something that is important to understand is understanding using a buy stop order to get into a trade. So let's just say for argument's sake, you like in this case, we like a stock at, let's say, 151, like we were looking at. But let's say it's trading at 150, which is actually where it was, or maybe a little bit higher than 150 prior to it getting there. So you put a buy stop up at that level for your initial position size. It gets put into your position summary. You're not having a massive risk. You just want to see it when it gets to that level. You don't want to miss it, which is a much more powerful and advanced way than just setting an alert because now you're in the trade with minimal position size, looking for feedback or proof from the market. None of this is luck. It's being prepared. When you know what you're looking for, you're not lost anymore. Always remember that. If you're overwhelmed, you just need to narrow down a little bit more like everybody just typed in there. If you do that, you're no longer scared, which is actually going to bring me to the next point. So anyway, we called out the buy stop in Boeing and we ended up getting follow through. And from the moment we entered the trade at 151. It peaked out around 158 and changed. So this was actually more than $7 on that one trade in a very difficult market going sideways simply from being prepared. It was nothing more than a relative strength play. 
These are the kind of things where if you come back to me and say, I don't have time, I say, you're full of beans. <laughs> you need to find the time. And what I'm about to show you can be done in 30 seconds. So if we take what the market did yesterday and we break down the S&P 500 and we'll just stick with the S&P 500, we can see that it closed down 1% down almost $4, right? So what we need to do now is take a look at which stocks had relative strength when the market got hit. And that's what this map is for. So there's two different ways we're going to do that. Now, when I did it yesterday, Boeing was actually like standing out screaming because it was one of the few stocks that were green yesterday. and was over here. And you can see that there's some pockets of opportunity. But we want to take this a little bit further. We want to dive a little bit deeper. and We want to go into the stock market power pyramid and kind of stack that on top of that. So now finding winning stock picks is more than just relative strength. But first, we're going to start with relative strength. And then we're going to work our way over to the power pyramid so that you can start to do the same process. Now, again, if you want me to do all of this for you and you want to get on these coaching calls and all those kind of things, uh, you can click the link below and learn about what we do. And if you want to join, perfect. There's a five-day trial. If not, completely up to you. You can stay here on YouTube. Either way, I just want to help. It's up to you to make a decision if you want to take the next step. So we're going to stack now. The market was weak yesterday. Which stocks deserve my attention today? because they had buying pressure on a day that the market was weak. And we're going to pull up two different kinds of buying pressure. One is the standard one that everybody looks at. The second one is the one that hardly anybody looks at, but it is incredibly, incredibly powerful. So we're going to stay with the software Finviz over here. So if we break down Finviz, let me actually just get this off the screen uh, so you can see it. So the software is called Finviz. We're going to work our way over to the screener and Everybody knows, again, if you've been a regular viewer of our channel, you know that the normal volatility that I use is this. This is my normal scan. So there's only 230 stocks that meet this criteria, right? Over $15, I don't trade penny stocks. I only trade market leaders. Average true range gives me opportunity to make money, volatility. Average volume means that those stocks have institutional attention on a regular basis. I could trade size and I could manage those positions. The very first one that we're going to take a look at is change from the open. Obviously, everybody knows change from the open, and that brought that down to 42 stocks. Now, you have a choice. Change from the open is one way to do that, and that's a pretty big list of stocks. It's 42 stocks. Now, you have to say to yourself, how much can I handle? How many stocks can I look at? Is my software set up correctly so that it gives me the best ideas in the moment that I'm about to put the trade on. That's a monster part of what we do in our community based on two years of feedback. Help me with the software. <laughs> like that's been the biggest thing. So that's literally the first session that we have when we work together is we set up your software. So now we have 42 stocks that meet the criteria. Can you trade 42 stocks? Is your software set up to keep an eye on 42 stocks? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you might want to break it down into an individual sector. You might want to hop on over here and say, that's fantastic. But what groups of stocks have been the strongest recently? Well, we just talked about um, Boeing. So that's where we're going to hop on over now and take a look at sector rotation. So yesterday, sector rotation was really not that hot. Now we're going to work our way over to the week, right? This is heading into Thursday. Here's heading into Friday. So energy stocks were strong. Industrial stocks on total, not necessarily strong, but number three in the list. So we're going to take a look at energy, industrial, and healthcare. So do you see what we're doing right now? How you find winning stocks, how to find the best stocks to buy now. It's a simple process of knowing what you're looking for. Now, we're not talking about entries and any of that kind of stuff. We're not talking about share size. We're not talking about profit targets. What we're talking about right now is how do I put the stocks in my game plan that have the highest probability of moving in my favor? We don't need every trade to work. We need to hold on to the winners, like I said before, right? So this is the first thing. Now we know that we're going to take a look at these couple of sectors right here, energy, industrials, and healthcare. So that's one way of breaking this down, right? That's just the bigger list. Now we're going to take a look at individual stocks. So we're going to go to energy. Out of energy, 11 stocks meet that criteria. Out of healthcare, two stocks meet that criteria, and you can see how they're performing. So again, Think about this right now. Raise your hand, type in yes, however you want to do it, type it in the comments. Raise your hand right now and the market was down big after the FOMC announced me like, I can't find anything. 
wrong. <laughs> we just need to take that little bit extra step. Remember, Napoleon Hill said it, the extra mile is never crowded. If you do that just little bit extra step, you know what's going to happen? You're going to get a little bit of success. And then all of a sudden, you'll be like, wow, I just found an extra hour to make money because I'm excited because I know what I'm looking at. So we just found two stocks in healthcare. And I'll just pull those charts up really quick. Look at what these stocks have done over the last couple of days in the last week while the market is getting hit. So we just went over healthcare, we went over energy, and now we're going to do the same thing in industrials. And again, you can see what some of these stocks are doing over the last week or so while the market, look at JCI finding a nice bid. So that's a sector broke, that breakdown. So we went from 42 stocks down to smaller pockets of stocks. So now you got to break that down based on how volatile can you handle, how expensive matches your trading account. So we just narrowed down 8,000 something stocks to that 42. But now we want to stack that a little bit better. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit this from different angles. We're going to combine the two of them, but first we're going to look at it a different way. So we just looked at, let me actually move this off the screen. We just looked at net change. I'm going to remove net change. And now we're going to work our way over here, change from the open. If you recognize change from the open and the way that we teach things, change from the open tells you how much attention did that stock have on that particular day. So essentially what that means is, was it a big green or a big red candle? The greater the distance between where it opened and where it closed, somebody with a lot of money had their attention on that stock. It opened here and they pushed it all the way up here and it stayed there. Or it opened here and they pushed it all the way down there and it stayed there. Change from the open is a pretty powerful relative strength or relative weakness signal to look for. So just based on yesterday, now we're going to look at change from the open up 2%, and that is 81 stocks. That's another list. That's a pretty darn big list. So now you would do the same exact thing that we just broke down from energy, industrials, and healthcare. You now break that list down a little further, but this is really where it gets exciting. And this is really where you start to say, I only want the best. I only want the cream of the crop, which ones did actually both. So now we're going to take it over here and we're going to break that list down. And that came down to 46 stocks. Now we're going to stack that even more. We're going to take a look at the week. Which of those stocks are also up for the week? And that brought it down to 33. So when you start to work these charts, and let's actually move uh, the change from yesterday, and you start to break them down, now you need to determine, are these stocks just strong recently? Or have these stocks, again, this is an energy stock, shown some relative strength and doesn't have room to go. So this stock here, BA, it was great yesterday, great the last two days. You can see where the next level of resistance is coming in. Let me actually, I want to only look at stocks here. Let me take those off of there. I'll bet you that, yeah, that just took five of them off of there. So what are we actually doing here right now? This is probably one of the biggest things that people really have a challenge with is they are scattered. Our job is to say, what is our goal? What's our objective? How do we want to interact with the stock market so that maybe you can be retired and have this extra money? Maybe you might want to just pay your mortgage through the stock market. You need to treat this like a business. And that's really the biggest thing that we teach is treating it like a business. When you make certain time of day to run your business, you will be shocked at the positive kind of results that you get when you map it out. I showed you Jan's entire template that we teach. Here's the exact stocks I'm looking at. Here's why I'm looking at those stocks. Here's how I found those winning stock picks. And then the last part is, here's what I plan to do. So if you go back to the beginning of today's call, where I talked about the market closed very weak yesterday, what stocks do I plan to trade if it follows through to the downside? That's known as short selling. The market closed very weak yesterday. What if the market stops going down? What would be the first stock that I'd go over to look at? And I showed you how we found Boeing from a relative strength perspective. So all of this is not that challenging. But again, I'm going to go back to this. I'm going to give you access to this document so you don't have to worry about taking a snapshot of it. Some of the processes here, excuses or results, which one will you produce? Now, I want to talk about this over here in, in, um, in a lot of detail, if you don't mind. A lot of people um, talk about, um, you know, I don't have a big account or I don't know what I'm doing and I'm trading with scared money and I'm afraid to put on the next trade. And I'm afraid the next trade is going to be a loser. And that's the mindset that a lot of people have. And what I'm about to say is going to it's going to be a revelation. It's going to snap you out of really thinking about what the next trade should mean to you. 
when we define putting on a trade and when we define having an edge, an edge means that you have a process or a system that predictably tells you, reliably tells you it's going to move in a certain direction. And that's really where confidence comes from in the markets. That's where you wake up every day and you expect to make money if we get movement in the market, right? That's where confidence comes from. So when you say I'm trading with scared money or I'm afraid to lose money, right? That means you are incorrectly focusing too much on whether the next trade will make money. Traders like myself and members of our community who have unshakable confidence do not need confidence in the next trade. You want to watch that again. What we have confidence in and what I teach everybody over and over and over every single day is you need to have confidence in your system over the next 10 trades, over the next 20 trades. Some trades are going to be winners. Some trades are not going to be winners. And you accept that. We don't need every trade to make money. We need most of them to make money. And then we need to make more when we win, understand how to do that, and we need to kick out losses because that's a part of the system. So the next time you are about to hit that buy button <laughs> and you're like, oh, I'm, af I'm afraid, I'm scared, right? You have to rethink what you're actually scared of. Your focus is wrong. In order to have confidence, so let's actually shift that. You have to say to yourself, you're probably saying to yourself, man, I want to be confident in this next trade. I want to be confident that this next trade is going to make money. Stop that. It's wrong. And I did that very intentionally. <laughs> what you need confidence in is the next bunch of trades if they're good ideas. I promise you. And I hope you come back. I hope that you, you give me some positive feedback on this. I hope it changes things for you. That when you're about to put that trade on, you have to say, did I make a good trade? Did I make a good trade? Did I make a good trade? Most of the time, you'll get follow through. If you have a proven edge, obviously, my edge is stacking the order flow and tape reading. If you have a proven edge, you have to have confidence in the next bunch of trades, giving you a total profitable outcome, not whether or not the next trade makes money. So I'm going to give you the cliff notes on that. If you're trading with scared money, if you are afraid the next trade won't make money, stop. Trading confidence comes from the total of your trades, not from the one trade. I promise you, when you start to think that way and you see that it's about the next 10 trades, it's about the next 20 trades, and that you should have confidence in your strategy, not each trade, the entire experience of managing money and picking stocks completely changes, completely changes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do a little bit of a rundown here. Uh, a couple of things that I want to talk about. First thing I want to talk about too, and this is something I've never done before. So you want to get this sheet. I'm actually going to give you the entire list of stocks that are in my personal game plan every day. So again, just to give you an idea of some of the stuff that I do for our community every day, this is the research that I do. So we have the rotation for the week. We have stocks that have stacked order flow bearish stacked order flow, stocks in play, the sheet that has this all broken down, and then it has all of the earnings plays. I am literally giving you all that. That's just the raw data that you put into your watch list when the market opens. But then we take that a step further, which is the list of stocks that are stacked order flow and at the optimal entry. That list is at the bottom of this document. So when we get all the way to the bottom of this document, Again, these are all this, what happens from all the coaching sessions. And you can see this is just last night's coaching call. I just want to be clear. All of this stuff is just last night. And if you want to attend the calls, you can click this link over here. You can learn about that. But all the way down at the bottom of the document, we have another video here on how to achieve your wildest trading dreams. But all the way on the bottom, we have the power pyramid. And then we have the entire list of stocks in my personal game plan today. That's a big part of it. So you're going to get this document. Just hop on over into our Facebook group. Absolutely simple. Just click the link and request access. If you're already in our Facebook group, you can get in there and download it. The other thing I want to talk about today, some other ideas that are in my game plan today, um, some news, Starbucks reported earnings. I'm definitely looking to trade Starbucks today. And you'd be surprised. Like everybody's like, oh, Starbucks is a boring stock. Sometimes when Starbucks catches a bid, 
that stock can trend for two, three, four days and produce some really nice cash flow for the week. Maybe pay your mortgage. Uh, next, we have two crypto related stocks that are in the game plan. Block actually had amazing earnings last night. Coinbase had a lot of other stuff going on in those two. They're trading a little bit differently this morning. Um, Coin was up a little bit last night, uh, 4%. You can see how it closed yesterday. SQ was up monstrous. It's up 12 and change. So in addition to the stock on the bottom of that big list of stocks on the bottom of that list, I'm going to be watching Starbucks, Coin, and SQ. So we gave you a little bit of, of everything today about how I find my winning stock picks from relative strength, two different ways to look at relative strength. We talked about whether or not you're setting up a perfect trade and whether or not that perfect trade warrants holding longer and bigger share size versus trading for cash flow. And I'm going to give you all of these questions from the coaching session because that's what I do on Fridays. I want you to have the ideas from the coaching session so that it spurs you to think, am I really trying hard enough to make the stock market make you money? That's really what you got to take a step back. If your excuse right now is I don't have the time, man, you hired yourself. Would you give your money to somebody who says I don't have the time? You got to find that time, right? And then the last thing is you could download this document, make a copy for yourself. Again, I'm just going to show you one more time uh, how to do that. When you go into the document, you're going to click over here on file and make a copy. That's how you're going to pull this document down. Okay. So have an awesome Friday, everybody. Go into the Facebook group, get your copy because all the way on the bottom is that entire list of stocks that I'm looking at today. You want to take a look at them, see if they match your resources. Let's go make some money today. Let's have an awesome day. Have an awesome weekend. If you haven't done it before, do me a favor. Make sure you click uh, the thumbs up and subscribe if uh, what we did today happens to be new to you. And more importantly, if you found some value in it. All right. Have an awesome day, everybody. I'll speak to you soon.